It's an update to the dual boiler version of an icon of the espresso world and one of the most affordable machines in its class. Key new features combined with impressive specs, truly useful functions and a great price make this feature first machine an incredible value and deserving of a serious look. Hey, espresso lovers, Mark here from Whole Latte Love. Does Miss Sylvia mean something to you? Well, for a couple of decades now, the Ranchilio Sylvia has been an icon of the home espresso world. Along with machines like the Gaja Baby, the Sylvia was one of the first home espresso machines to bring commercial capabilities and build quality to home espresso enthusiasts. Today, I'll have an in-depth look at the updated Sylvia Pro X dual boiler, dual PID machine. Coming up, what's new for the X version of the Sylvia Pro? Plus, I'll have test results for out-of-the-box performance, including scase brew temperature accuracy, brewing pressures, and milk steaming times. I'll share what we like about the Sylvia Pro and what to be aware of before you buy. And I'll finish up under the hood with a detailed look at internal components. Now, that'll be from our original look at the Pro model, but the Pro and Pro X are essentially identical internally. This is gonna be a bit of a ride, but stick with me and you'll know this machine inside and out. This video is chaptered, so you can easily jump to points of interest. Before we dive in, the Sylvia origin story. We here at Whole Latte Love played a role in bringing the original Sylvia to the general public. More than 20 years ago, we first saw the Sylvia at Dallas Brothers Coffee in New York City. At the time, they were a distributor for Ranchilio. The Sylvia was a promotional machine Ranchilio gave to distributors. We knew there was a home market for the Sylvia, so we asked Ranchilio to make more, and we became the first to offer the game-changing Sylvia to home espresso enthusiasts. After two decades and thousands delivered, the iconic Miss Sylvia remains a much-loved single boiler machine machine with a dedicated user community who often modify the machine with things like PID. Now, unlike the original single boiler, the Sylvia Pro X needs no modifications. With accurate PID temperature control of both boilers built in, you can brew and steam milk at the same time. Steam is always available if you want it, so no waiting for a boiler to reach steaming temp. And using steamer hot water from the machine has no effect on brew temperatures. Under the hood, the new Pro X is essentially identical to the Pro model released a couple of years ago. But there are three key upgrades in the form of a brew circuit pressure gauge, a larger portafilter, and programmable soft pre-infusion. The pressure gauge gives one the ability to tune the machine and some peace of mind that extractions are in the ballpark. Now, I don't want to go too deep into the rabbit hole of brew pressure, but know what you see on the gauge is not a direct read of pressure within your portafilter. Out of the box, the Pro X I had was factory tuned to produce about nine bar of static pressure in the group, which showed a pressure of about 10.5 bar on the machine's gauge. The original Pro model shipped with a smaller portafilter and filter basket, which limited coffee dose weight and the use of larger aftermarket precision filter baskets common in specialty coffee. The portafilter for the Pro X is deeper and comes with a double basket able to accommodate about 18 gram doses. Beyond that, it can fit larger precision baskets right up to triple shot size, like this 22 gram Barista Pro and this IMS Competition Triple that's 28.5 millimeters in height. The Pro X introduces soft pre-infusion, which wets the coffee puck prior to application of brew pressure. It's programmable, ranging from two to six seconds, or it can be turned right off. Potential benefits of soft pre-infusion include swelling the ground coffee to reduce channeling, allowing fresher coffees a moment to off-gas locked up CO2, to reduce brightness, and helping to dig into a coffee for richer, more aromatic extractions. How you might use a feature, it depends on the coffee used. Personally, I had my best results leaving it off or very short for classic espresso bean blends 
and found some benefit maxing it out at six seconds when using fresher, lighter roast specialty coffees. For those, I could grind a hair finer and detect more nuanced flavor and a slight decrease in brightness. Now, take all that with a grain of salt as those kind of results are very subjective and dependent on other variables as well, but it does give you one more thing to play with. The Sylvia Pro X is available in the black I have here, stainless and pink for a true Miss Sylvia look. Built on a steel frame, the body panels, large cup warming surface, face and drip tray surface are all stainless steel. The machine is 10 inches wide, 15 and a half in height and just under 17 inches deep. The water reservoir has a two liter capacity. The steam boiler is one liter and it's 0.3 liters in the brew boiler. The cup tray has a little trick. These rails are adjustable to three heights for the cup platform, allowing you to adjust cup height relative to the portafilter spouts and position it to leave room for a scale if weighing shots. The drip tray itself, it's rather small, so you need to keep an eye on that. The steam wand features a four hole tip, but is not of the no burn style. It does have this rubber grip to save your fingers. Up front to the left are switches for main power, turning the steam boiler on and off, and for dispensing hot water. Front and center is the PID display. Here you set temperatures for the boilers and access other useful additional functions. More on those in a minute. When idle, the display shows the current brew temp. Below the display, the coffee switch starts and stops an extraction and is used to select and confirm selections in the display. When you start an extraction, the display becomes a shot timer, and that's a really handy feature. To set brew temperature, use the minus and plus buttons to change, and then press the brew switch to confirm the change. The display will flash the set temperature until the boiler reaches the new setting. When the display is on solid, you are at the set temperature. Now, when you turn on the Sylvia Pro X for the very first time, the steam boiler is off by default. To turn it on, just press the steam switch. When you do that, a light above the steam knob flashes, indicating the boiler is heating. When the light goes solid, the steam boiler is at the set temperature. Now, you don't have to turn the steam boiler on every time you turn the machine on. If it was on when last used, it will be on the next time you power up the machine. Here's a look at the extended functions available through the display. To access these, press and hold the plus and minus keys for three seconds. T2 will show up and you can navigate through the extended functions using the plus and minus keys. To select a function, press the brew switch. Then make changes using the plus and minus keys. Then confirm by pressing the brew switch again. Here's a list of available functions. T2, that sets the steam boiler temperature. F01 starts a three-step group head cleaning with back flushing. F02 manages automatic wake up. Basically, this puts the machine in standby and then wakes it up after a set number of hours. F03 and 04 are used to drain the coffee and steam boilers. That's a very rare feature, useful for putting a machine in long-term storage or easily turning over the water in the service boiler. F05 manages automatic shutdown. You can set a time out to two hours to have the machine turn off or you can disable that auto shutdown. F06 selects from Fahrenheit or Celsius temperature display. F07 selects operating voltage. And F08 is where you set the soft pre-infusion time, ranging from two to six seconds, or you can just turn it off. With the PID set to a brew temperature of 199 degrees, here's a look at brew temperature accuracy using a SCASE device. As I start the pump, it takes about 10 seconds for temperature to equalize within this case. Ranchilio says the Sylvia Pro X is accurate to plus or minus one degree of set temperature. And at around 12 seconds, temperature equalizes and this case is reading within one degree Fahrenheit. As we continue, the temps only get closer to the 199 setting and hold steady, always within a few tenths of a degree out to 30 seconds. That's Honestly, really incredible performance. The kind of accuracy is something I don't see all the time. 
With the PID, you can set the steam boiler in a range from 248 to 257 degrees Fahrenheit. For the test, I have it set to the max of 257 so we can see just what the machine is capable of. The steam wand is uninsulated, so you need to be careful where you grab and has a commercial style four hole tip for excellent milk roll and mixing. For the test, we time how long it takes to steam five ounces of fridge temp 42 degree Fahrenheit milk in the pitcher to a finish temp of about 140 degrees. The four hole steam tip gave a nice vigorous roll to the milk in the pitcher for excellent mixing and consistent texture. From start to finish, it took a respectable 15 seconds to take the milk from 42 degrees to slightly over the 140 degree finish temperature. The Sylvia Pro comes with one porta filter with double spouts. The way the handle rests, the filter basket ends up level to countertops for easier tamping. Single and double shot filter baskets are included. The machine comes with a real tamper, metal with wood handles, something you don't usually get at this level. You'll also get a group brush, coffee scoop, a stopper, and a Puro cleaning tablets for back flushing and a BWT Best Safe pad filter. I was happy to see that as BWT products are my first choice for preventing lime scale formation in espresso machines. So great to get in the habit of using those right from the start. So here's that look under the hood at internal components from my original Sylvia Pro video. Following that, I'll be back to wrap up with my likes and dislikes for this machine. Let's take a detailed look inside the Sylvia Pro. We'll start at the back here, work our way forward, talk about the different boilers, that kind of thing. So first thing you notice, you got three tubes here. You know, like what's going on? Well, this is where the water reservoir would sit, would be kind of like up in here. I've taken that all off and these three tubes would all be in there. So this funny looking one here, that is for sensing the water level. So that's going to sit, sorry, I'll untwist that. That's going to sit in the reservoir here. It connects down in. There's a little place where it connects in. So it'll be like that. And what it kind of does is senses the pressure uh, of the water in there using this sensor here. And this lets the machine know if it's out of water. Um, you'll get a message in the display up front that it's out of water. Uh, so that's that one. It's kind of a unique system. A lot of machines will use uh, conductivity of the water and probes or weight or something and this is going to use the uh, pre air pressure through this. Other two tubes here. Start with this one. This is how water gets to the pump. These are silicone tubes. You'll notice after the pumps it's all either going to be copper or this braided stainless, but you have two pumps in here. Kind of a unique setup. Uh, this pump here, this is for your brewing. It provides all your brew pressure. That's why it's a stainless line like this. Uh, the back one here, th uh, this one fills the service boiler right here. Notice that's copper. So let's take a look at that service boiler. It's a one liter stainless steel. It's got the nice insulated jacket on it there. So up top here, uh, we'll start over on this side. This is where your steam's going to come off. If you're taking hot water out the boiler, this comes through this pipe here off the bottom. Hot water always comes off the bottom of a boiler like this. Right here we have what's called the uh, vacuum relief valve. So when the machine is cold, it's open to outside pressure. As the boiler heats up, you know, if you ever heard these things heating up, you'll hear a little hissing as they hit, you know, about boiling point, start creating steam. And then, a, you know, little water vapor, sometimes little spurts of water come out of here. That's why that's this, there's this tube here, which is going to go down and out to the drip tray in the front. We'll take a look at that in a minute. Something I always look for in a machine that, you know, you're not going to be venting moisture internally in the machine every time it heats up. Uh, going back here, this is our fill level probe. So this is how the machine knows when to fill up with the water. It doesn't fill all the way because it needs some space to create the steam in there. Right next to there, there are the connections to the heating element. I believe it's 850 watts in this boiler. Then this bad boy back here, this is the safety valve. This is a 1.9 bar safety valve. Yep, it's got this big tube here. So if the pressure in this boiler exceeds 1.9 bar, this valve opens and releases pressure. That's why we've got a really big tube. This tube also goes out to the drip tray. Now it's very rare for that to happen. It's just for safety. If the pressure builds up too much in that boiler, bad things could happen. Um, so that is the service boiler. 
for your steam and your hot water. Here is the brew boiler. This is a brass boiler, 0.3 liter, I believe. Um, let's take a look at that. It's got the jacket on here. Um, oh, and so you're getting passive heat off of these all the time when the machine's on. I had the top cover off. This thing is solid. It reminds me of uh, the old Expo Bar machines that were just built like bricks. Um, so that would be sitting here and you'd be getting all that heat passively coming up and heating your cups. And this gets nice and warm when the machine is on. It really does a nice job heating up your cups. But let's take a look at that. So going in, so there's that braided stainless line. Um, so you're under pressure here. Then we have what's called an expansion valve here, or I call it an OPV for overpressure valve. This is what controls the brew pressure. So this releases pressure at a set point, right around nine bars. So you're gonna get nine bar of pressure. And then any excess water or pressure really is bled off through here. And this is gonna be cold water here. It's still cool. That would go back to your water reservoir if the pressure is exceeding nine bar. Up top here, um, this is a PID probe right here, so this senses a temperature in the boiler. The one on the service boiler comes in from the bottom. Uh, the connection for the heating element. Then we have two high limit switches up here. So these guys, I think they're 140 degrees centigrade. So if you get above that in this boiler, you see that little white stuff there? That's like a heat paste. It helps the heat transfer so it can sense it. If they get above 140 degrees, these will pop like circuit breakers. And then you can, if you had to reset them, you just take off the screws off the top, get in there and push those back down just like you would a circuit breaker. Um, so that is the brew boiler. Over here, again, the hot water coming off the bottom of the service boiler. Little solenoid valve here. So when you click the switch out front for hot water, it opens this valve and then you get hot water out the front here. So let's take, take a look at the front now. I think that's everything inside. Oh, yeah, a little show you. Here's a little Jakar controller for the PIDs. Again, both boilers are controlled by PID. Um, so that's down here. Uh, we got a couple static relays here. They control power going to the boilers, those short little pulses that are uh, really what makes a PID system work. Just little pulses of power once you reach temperature to keep very accurate temperatures. Okay, out front. So I've taken this cover off. So this usually sits here. I'll take the portafilter out. So this is a group head. So that cover would generally be here. I've also taken the cover off the front here so we can see back in here. Now here's where the, uh, that vacuum relief valve drains. And here's where the, that safety valve, should it go again, that's probably never going to happen. But if it did, all that water is going to end up outside into the drip tray. Um, our group head here. Uh, all the brass in this machine, by the way, is certified lead-free, and the Italian standards are actually tighter than most of the U.S. standards. Um, right here, this is our three-way solenoid valve. So at the end of an extraction, when it stops, this valve opens and it releases water and pressure from the puck that's in here, and then that travels down into your drip tray. That's how you get a real nice dry puck. When you hear people talk about three-way solenoid valves on a machine like this, that's it. Um, of course, there's where our hot water is going to come out. Our steam, if we haven't already talked about it, four-hole steam tip. Um, this steam wand is not insulated, so this, this will get hot, but you can grab it here. Uh, and then, you know, the other switches and what have you here, steam valve um, and the PID controller. Overall, I'm impressed with the new Sylvia Pro X. What do I like? The ease of accessing machine functions from the front and center display. You know, I've programmed a lot of PIDs with those plus and minus buttons, and this is by far my favorite. Very easy to use with a brew button used to confirm selections. I like the new Porta filter that can accommodate triple shot baskets and the larger double shot basket that comes with the machine. The soft pre-infusion gives users another way to help fine-tune espresso extractions. The cup warming surface is large and quite warm. I like the automated boiler draining, which makes it easy to turn over water in the boilers or prep for storage. And I really like the value. The Pro X is priced well below the majority of dual boiler PID machines. So what are things to be aware of? Could it use a larger drip tray? Sure, but I'm gonna be willing to live with that one. The steam wand is not a no burn style, but does have the rubber grip. Just be careful when using and wipe down right after steaming to avoid excess baked on milk. Some may use the automatic wake up feature. Just be aware it's something you have to set every time you wanna use it and you're setting how many hours until you want the machine to turn on and not a time of day. 
Are there machines which maybe are more beautiful? Yeah, but you know, those highly polished and finished dual boilers with E61 groups are far more expensive. What you have here is a solid, well-built, feature-first machine with excellent specs, doable pricing, and worthwhile upgrades over the original. That's the Rangilio Silvia Pro X. It's available now from Whole Latte Love. As always, if you have any questions, use those comments and I'd be happy to get you a detailed answer. And if you love this stuff, I do invite you to subscribe. I'm Mark and I hope you'll come back soon for more of the best in everything coffee brought to you by Whole Latte Love.